Hello little hoes, my name is Kristen and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about my Syngonium collection and sort of a brief overview of how I take care of them and their personalities. Big thanks to Tessa for suggesting this video. I super appreciate all your suggestions for videos lately because I've kind of been in a creative slump. Haven't really had any great ideas and you're helping keep me motivated, so a big thank you again. I'm gonna dive right into this. My first ever Syngonium was one that I found from SCC Greenhouse, which is a local community college greenhouse, and I love it there. It's amazing. The people are amazing, the plants are amazing, and they try and offer some unique things at very reasonable prices. I never thought I would really be into Syngoniums, for some reason, they just never had much of an appeal to me until I got this guy. And this is my SCC find. This is a modeled Syngonium, a Syngonium podophyllum. And yes, it is desperately in need of either a moss pole or a new stake of some kind. I decided to grow him more vertically rather than in a hanging basket. I originally had this guy in the sunroom and it really took off and did crazy amazing growth in a very short amount of time. Because it got so big so fast, I moved it into the living room to make some space for things in here and I kind of regret it just because I think that the variegation is really intensified by the high sunlight in here. Looking at it, I think I might want to move it back in here, try and find a spot for it because it's really beautiful and deserves a bit better situation. I don't know if you can see that bottom leaf right there is super variegated and the new leaf coming out in here is also looking like it's going to be a really cool pattern. So yes, I think that sometimes sunlight can play an effect on the intensity of variegation, but if you're starting out with a plant, be it Syngonium or other, that just doesn't have much variegation in its genes, if it's just a particularly lacking sport, then you're probably not going to do much by increasing the light. But if you have a good specimen to start with, then yes, sometimes that high intensity light will at least intensify the variegation. Very minimal care with this. I find that this podophyllum is super forgiving with watering and it does dry out quite a bit between uh, waterings, which I tend to do maybe weekly to every other week, depending on how hot it is, what time of the season. I did recently do some propagation to it, which is why it's putting out, I think, all this new growth. That Syngonium was kind of the gateway drug for some of my other Syngoniums that I have, which admittedly isn't a lot, and I'm hoping this year to do some trades for some awesome Syngoniums. You know who you guys are if you're watching. I'm super excited. I'm gonna briefly touch on this one, which this is a Syngonium or Neptithus. I mentioned it in a earlier video that I recently learned Neptithus are from Africa while Syngonium are from South America. They are very similar looking, but geographically are from very different places. I think that this is actually a Neptithus, not a Syngonium, even though it was tagged as a Syngonium. This is Regina Red, and I haven't really been interested in this kind of coloration before, but picked it up because this particular one has some really interesting green splashing going on. I thought it was super cool. I don't know that it's going to continue. This is the latest leaf and it doesn't seem to have any green splashes. I'm going to grow this out for a time and see if it's something interesting with the green splashes or if it's just going to be a plain old Regina red, which I still, I still ain't mad at it. I think it's kind of interesting. And I'm also trying it out in the 
sunroom here because I think it's probably going to be very drought tolerant and tolerant of high light. I just wanted something that's a little bit leafier, broader leaf to have in and amongst my cacti here. So I'm trying it out. This one is a splurge for sure. This is a Syngonium erythrophyllum. I believe they also call this Lanocarti Road, but it has intense red backsides to the leaves. The foliage straight on is a very dark, dark green. I snagged this guy at the plant farm and it was a little bit expensive for me. It was like 35 bucks, but I'm very happy to find it because I've seen some going for crazy prices nowadays. I think um, Steve's Leaves had one auctioning and it was like a couple hundred bucks, which is just nuts to me. But I feel that Syngonia might be like the latest craze this year, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately for me, who wants to collect more of them, but I, I feel like it's Syngonium are just gonna be crazy popular so definitely snag some interesting ones while you can, while the price is right. This is the newest leaf here, which it comes out very shiny and it goes to a little bit more of a matte texture. It's been super easy as well, but also super slow growing. I wouldn't consider this a particularly fast one, at least for me, and in comparison to the uh, modeled form. I have it in the sunroom. I'm thinking I'll continue to keep it in the sunroom and see if it remains happy. Again, summer might kind of be a tell if it can withstand the intensity of the sunlight and the dry air. For water, I probably water him once a week. I think it will probably increase this summer to at least twice a week, if not more. Next is my dark beauty here. This is Syngonium Raei. This was top of my wish list for last year and I found it super early in the season and snagged it. I don't think I paid too much for it. I think it was maybe like 30 to 40 bucks. It's awesome. It just has this amazing velvety blackness, which I'm not even sure if it's showing up very well or not, just because it's like a it's, what is it, the Vanta Black or something? It just absorbs all the light. It's my black hole synonym. I put it in this pot. I thought the matte black pot would look cool with the leaves. It really does, but unfortunately, I think it's time to repot it. It's just drying out very fast. I have it hanging out in the bathroom, and even there where it's not super intense lighting or anything, it's drying out so fast, so it's time for a repot. I do have some propagations of it. I took a top cutting a couple months ago and I think it's ready to pot those guys up. I think I might put it in something bigger and put some cuttings around it because I want to maybe add some fullness instead of just like one little weak stem there. I will say I did move it closer to the bathroom window at one point during the summer and that burnt him. I don't know if it was just too intense too fast or if perhaps this particular species doesn't like really high sunlight. I'm kind of leaning towards that but it's a beautiful velvet aeroid and if you like velvety philodendrons and anthurium I think you'll really appreciate this one. Also it doesn't come across very well I think right now but when the new leaves are emerging they almost have like an ombre effect with like velvety lighter green transitioning to this darker black and as soon as it's exposed to light it starts to darken and it creates such a cool effect. Another slower grower uh, for me but I love it. Uh, and this guy was my favorite plant, I think, of last year. This is the Syngonium Winlandii, and oh, it, it, ooh, I love it so much. I love things with silver 
veining and this one just hits all the right notes for me. You can see it is starting to outgrow its pot. I do need to repot it, but I'm kind of sad because it's so perfect right now and it sits up on the shelf in my bathroom. It's so happy up there. I kind of hate to, you know, break up this pot plant combo and I don't want my baby to grow up is what I'm saying, but it needs to be repotted and I'm also going to be propagating this for a friend, for a trade, so I think it needs to happen soon. It's my favorite plant. I love it. Again, slow growing, but I'm not too mad about it. I'm sure with more humidity, it would be a bit faster growth, but whatever. I mean, look at it. Another really nice velvety one, similar to the Rayei, but for that really intense silver. When I got the Rayei, it did have on the juvenile leaves a little bit of silver veining, but as those leaves mature, it goes away. And I believe with the Winlandii, it will continue to have that silver veining as it matures. Maybe not quite as intense, but it should still be there. I also read an article that a way to tell the difference between the two species as they are mature is that um, Regii has a milky sap where Winlandii does not. Now, I haven't cut Winlandii to see the sap yet, but I can confirm that Regii does have that milky uh, sap when you snap off a leaf or stem. Hey, editing Kristen here. So I just wanted to say that I totally forgot to include um, information about the humidity needs on the Syngonium I mentioned here. I was asked to and it just slipped my memory. So I'll touch on it now. I don't really find that they need much humidity at all to do well. The potophyllum especially, very low humidity, and I've been experimenting with the others, and I think that they all do well on pretty limited. Rayei might be the one of the group that requires the most. Occasionally, I've had to mist it to help some leaves unfurl, which I assume is from maybe less humidity than it likes. So that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I would love to hear what Syngonium are in your collection, which ones are your favorite, and why. As always, stay safe, healthy, and sane. I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye.